This is a tutorial about how I made two different single take continuous shot videos using Google Flow. In one of them, I started with a VO3 clip, which I extended using VO2. So I lost all the sound. And this is kind of what that one looks like. Okay, here we go. One minute, no cuts. Walking all the way through the train. And the other one is a one minute continuous take where someone's talking the whole time. There's a poem we had to read back in high school about taking the road less traveled. And she's kind of a consistent character, but not really if you compare the start frame and the end frame. I used VO3 fast mode. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna redo that movie in VO3 quality so we can kind of compare the fast mode versus the quality mode. I know a lot of people have questions about that. The big difference, of course, is the number of credits each one uses. So VO3 quality uses 100 credits and VO3 fast uses 20 credits. So you basically get five to one, if I did my math right. So we're gonna learn two different ways to do continuous shots. One is extending a clip, and one is using what's commonly known as the last frame, first frame technique. And that uses the frames to video option in Google Flow. Okay, here we go, one minute, no cuts, walking all the way through the train. So the trick with this one is that I wanted to start with someone talking, because VO3 has audio and VO2 doesn't, I wanted to start with a VO3 clip to begin with some dialogue, and then as I extended it, I could just add some music. So I like this idea of a character walking down a train and having the passengers change into different types of passengers as she's walking through it. So this was the clip that I started with. This was the very first prompt I tried. <sighs> okay, this is a one minute continuous shot video walking through a train. And the wrong character's saying the line. Like if you look at here, it should be the production assistant saying that line. So I tried it again and it worked. So once I had that one, I just followed this prompt and then just continued to change who the passengers were. So I'll show you what I mean. So if you were doing this and you had just found your first clip that you liked, you would go add to scene. And now we're over to scene builder. So this is the project. And then this is the scene builder where we can arrange the scenes. Everything we generate in scene builder will also be in this project. What I did is I had this initial shot and then I clicked the plus button and went to extend. And now it says, what should happen next? And over here is our prompt for this happens and then an extended shot. So the first one I did was camera tracking motion as the conductor walks down the aisle revealing more passengers. And I think this is an important part where we say there are more passengers being revealed. And then we say the passengers are all anthropomorphic animals. And then she smiles in amusement. So we're getting a reaction from her. So let's see how this one turns out. And again, I'm doing, oh, let me show you. So it looks like I can do this in VO3 fast mode. Um, let's try it. And it says, no, this feature isn't supported in VO3 fast. You have to switch to VO2. So the only way we can extend these clips is to use VO2 fast for now. And hopefully that will change soon. But as of right now, that's the only one that will work for this technique. And then a little bit later, I'm gonna show you how to extend a clip using VO3. So we're gonna do the anthropomorphic animals like I did in my original. All right, let's see how that turns out. So you can either, you can either grab this and just kind of scrub and see what happens, um, or you can play it. So now we have the anthropomorphic animals. Let's do another one. So we'll just click the plus button again and click extend what should happen next. And we'll paste that same prompt and now we'll change them to, um, let's change them to something different that wasn't in my original um, ballerinas, how about? And let's try and give her a little bit of action, which I didn't really do. Um, so let's have the conductor wave to one ballerina. All right, let's just kind of see what happened here. Oh, now she's stopped entirely. What happened there? Now she waved. So what was that? So I, I can't remember the exact prompt that we did. So what I can do is go back to this project and see camera tracking as she walks down. So I'm gonna go back to scene builder. There's nothing in this prompt that makes me think it should have just stopped and had her turn around and go that way. 
it looks like it thinks that she's standing still um, because of this, that maybe this looks like she's not moving. What we can do here is trim it. So we can go here, trim back, and now we'll extend again. So we've kind of trimmed to the end here. So now we're starting from there instead of where we were before, and we'll extend from here. I think it's important to show these times that things don't work out. Cause I think if you see a tutorial and everything works out perfectly, but they don't always work the way they're supposed to. And a lot of times you run into problems and you have to figure out ways around them. So thanks for sticking with me through these mistakes. Let's see if that helped at all. Yeah. So now we got our walking again. The trick there was that the final frame looked too much like she was just standing there and it didn't know that she was in motion. All right, and that was basically what I did. So, you know, it started with a VO3 clip and then went to the VO2 and the VO2 and just kept continually doing that and changing the background characters um, to, you know, different creatures and aliens and things like that. So that's how I did that one. There was one point where I extended and I had to leave the train. I was trying to figure out how to get out of the train and that took a little bit more work. Um, let me show you that really quick. I wanted her to come to the end of the train and walk off the train. Um, and I'm going to try this one again. But here's what happened for me. Um, she gets there and then all of a sudden the camera started to pan up. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. What if, what if um, at the end of this, the camera continues to pan up? Um, and now we kind of see the top of the train. It took a little bit, didn't quite get there. There we go. This was like, okay, now I'm outside the train. This is perfect. So I liked that. And then I was able to try different things. And this is for me where the project went off the rails because I was like, oh, I could have it pan over here. So I tried a bunch of things and um, that's where I really went through credits on this project was trying to figure out what happens after we get out of the train. But the actual walk through the train was pretty easy to get through. That's how you use Google Flow to do a single continuous shot with VO3 that extends with VO2 clips. Now let's do one with VO3 quality mode and extend them that way. I know you're probably thinking like, wait, but you said that you can't extend them in VO3. And you can't, but you can do this other technique that many of you know about called last frame, first frame. There's a poem we had to read back in high school about taking the road less traveled. So this is how she started off. And then we see her walking for one minute. And for the most part, initially, you don't really notice that she's changing. And then every eight seconds, it gets worse and worse. And as someone in the comments pointed out, and I was thinking as well, it's like when you used to do VHS tapes, every time you make a copy, every copy is worse than the version that came before it. So the mid journey image that we're starting with looks fine. Then we're doing a screen grab from an AI generated video, which doesn't have the same quality, doesn't have the same amount of detail. And so it's a little bit less quality. And then we just keep reducing the quality. So over time, it just gets to be, it looks more like this at the end. So if we're starting from scratch, we can go to text to video and click frames to video. And for these continuous shots, we're only going to use a start frame because we want the end frame to be wherever the video ends up going. And then we'll use the last frame of that video as the start frame for the next video. That's why they call it last frame, first frame. So once we're on frames to video, we click this plus button to upload a new one. It remembers all of the previous ones that you've uploaded. So since I started with this one, I'm just going to click this button here. Um, you could also just upload one from scratch. Um, and since I did this in VO fast last time, I'm going to do, so this is 20 credits to do the frames to video. I'm going to go to quality mode and now it's going to be a hundred credits. Okay. So let's see how this goes. There's a poem we had to read back in high school about taking the road less traveled. I think that looks really good. Um, so let's do this. Let's add it to the scene. So we're in the project here and we want to get it over to scene builder. So let's add it to scene. And now we're in scene builder. Um, and what I did when I did it is I just jumped to the last frame of each of the clips like this. And then there's a button at the top here that says save frame as asset. And I click that one and then it adds the 
frame there. And as you can see, looking at these, you can kind of see how she changes over time. So she starts off here and then it's progressively changing and now it's a completely different person. So this is a good way to visualize the degradation of doing the last frame each time. Um, one thing that I wanted to try and someone suggested um, was not necessarily, sometimes the last frame is blurry. Like if you see around her eyes, they're a little bit blurry. Where if you go here, they're not quite as blurry. So because this is a little bit higher quality here, um, we're going to use this as the last frame. Um, and I know what you're thinking, it's not all going to blend together. But what I noticed is when I did last frame, first frame, and actually used the last frame, I still had to trim up the clips in a video editing program. It, it wasn't a seamless single clip. Um, I had to download each individual clip and trim them up. And since I have to do that anyway, I may as well try and find the best clip that I can. So let's use this frame as asset. And I don't want to go too far back because she talks almost all the way to the end. Let's see. Yeah. So we've got like a, like a quarter of a second or so. So that's a pretty good shot there, right? All right. So we'll use this frame as the asset. I like this too because she's looking at the camera, so hopefully this will help keep her consistent. So if this makes sense, we've got our first clip here. We've saved this frame as an asset. So now we're using this last frame or almost last frame as our first frame over here. So now motion tracking shot of the woman walking. She says everyone was so sure they take the road less traveled, including me. So we've switched over here to VO3 fast mode. I'm going to switch back to VO3 quality mode. So I'm not sure why it switched over, but it did. And as you can see, we're going from 20 to 100 credits again. And now let's run this one. Everyone was so sure they'll take the road less traveled, me included. Already we can kind of see between that and that. It's kind of the same, but we're, we, I can tell we're, gonna, we're losing it a little bit, right? Um, let's try that, but this time let's trim it up a little bit. So we've trimmed it and we'll say frame as asset and click that and then say motion tracking. Now, one thing that I've noticed is like sometimes you can add words in there like regretfully uh, to try and give her a little bit of emotion. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but let's see how this works. But that's not how things turned out. I've always taken the road most traveled. If you've ever used VO3, you know <laughs> this. And I have had a lot of people tell me all of the things that you can do to not get subtitles. And I've tried all of them and nothing works 100%. I kind of get the impression that not putting quotes in helps a little bit. But as you can see in that one, there are no quotes. And I've tried the same thing by saying no subtitles and I still get subtitles. So, so if I were doing this for real and not for this tutorial, I would redo this one. Uh, but since there's not captions on this final frame that we want to use, I'm just going to keep them for now. That's actually a pretty good shot, I think. You can kind of tell she's walking and she's smiling a little bit. Let's actually use the final frame this time. Now, I did this a little bit later in mind, but I wanted to slowly introduce things that are changing. Um, so we can say motion tracking shot of the woman walking. So now we can introduce other elements that will be showing up as she's walking. I did all the things I was supposed to do, got a job, got married, got divorced, rinse and repeat. So on the pro side, I love the fact that we switched to this profile view and we have this person in the park bench, like the prompt said. Um, on the con side, the talking, if you just look at it in general, it's fine. But when she's talking, it seems like maybe she's talking to the interviewer over here and the camera moved to the side. We have a lot to work with here because she says rinse and repeat here. I think she got some extra piercings too, maybe. All right, let's kind of play off of this and let's have someone holding a boom mic. <laughs> like, like the camera person moved over. I imagine there's someone holding a boom mic over here and there's an interviewer here and we're the camera. But I like where I'm at now. And I only got here because my road took me here. And let's update the script a little bit. I, it was like 11 p.m. at night when I was writing this. So let's just change it. I'm not going to change it too much, but let's just have her say. Um, and why wouldn't I? This road made me younger in 60 seconds. 
So I think you get the idea of how to do it. So is VO3 quality perfect? No, but it's definitely a lot better than the fast mode in terms of taking the last frame and using it as the first frame. The trade-off there is that it's much more credit intensive. So it's five to one, like I said. So you can do a lot more iterating with the fast mode. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you uh, create single continuous shots using either of the methods, whether you're extending a clip or whether you're doing the last frame, first frame, or maybe you're doing a combination of both. I don't know. Uh, but hopefully that helps you understand how people are doing these really cool shots. And that's it for me. Uh, do you have any final words? Sub subscribe to AI Video School and come along for the, r along for the ride. <laughs>